Hey everybody, MS Farzan here, and in this video, we're going to discuss combat scenes. I'm going to give you two tips that are going to help to make your combat scenes feel more effective and more authentic, whether you're writing a novel, a screenplay, or running a Dungeons & Dragons campaign. The first thing to think about is to do your research. I know this may sound obvious, but check it out. If you're writing a scene that includes archers, you might want to take an archery class or at least read up on different types of bows to help make your writing sound more authentic. You're going to want to know the difference between a short bow and a long bow or a composite bow and a crossbow so that you know what the sizes are, so you know how much strength it takes to pull back a longbow, so that you know how long it takes to load up a crossbow with crossbow bolts. That's going to make your writing come across as more authentic and more exciting even if your book isn't being read by a bunch of archers. Here's another more specific example. When I was writing my first cyberpunk novel, which is called Entromancy, I wanted the main character to use a type of weapon that is kind of like a cross between a lightsaber and a Japanese katana. Japanese katanas are something that I know from training with them for quite a long time, so I wanted to really get it right and write about something that I know so that I could give a lot of specifics to the reader and make it feel more authentic even though it's a made-up weapon. Now, this is a facsimile of a Japanese katana. It's called an iaito. It's made with an aluminum alloy that allows it to have some of the same weighting, although not as heavy as a real katana, but it can't be sharpened. It's kind of pointy, but it's more used for practice. I based the Nightblade after this weapon because A, it's something I know about, and B, I wanted the main character to have a feel of a two-handed weapon, which this, for the most part, is. And something that's very immediately obvious to me when I'm watching movies that have Japanese katanas in them is the way that a character holds the weapon. For example, a Japanese katana is held more like a screwdriver than a hammer with this front hand. So if I see a character in a movie holding it like this, I automatically know that they haven't been given the proper training to hold that weapon. Secondarily, usually a Japanese katana is held with the right hand on top, right, right below the guard here, and the bottom hand right at the very bottom of the weapon, right at the bottom of the hilt with the hand peeking out right at the bottom. So there's this space, almost like a fist's width in between uh, the two hands. So a lot of the times I see this in a movie with katanas and I go, great, they haven't gotten that right. And that kind of brings me out of the experience and ruins the movie a little bit for me. When I see that they're holding it correctly and swinging it about correctly, meaning that they have a real weapon which has some weight to it, uh, I feel a lot more immersed into the experience because I feel that they've done their homework. The same could be said for any type of combat, and it might take some learning on your part, whether that means going to a martial arts class or reading up about different types of weapons or watching some videos that have their own authentic versions of that combat. Either way, it's really going to help your combat scenes by giving them an air of authenticity. The second thing you'll want to think about is what I call using the spyglass. If you have this huge battle with all different types of units and people fighting each other with different types of weapons, step back for a minute and imagine that you're a pirate on a pirate ship and you're up in the crow's nest and you're looking out on the high seas and you see another ship in the distance. Think about how you would describe that ship in the distance without using your spyglass, your little telescope. You'd probably see a mast, you'd see some sails, you'd see the wooden ship itself, and maybe some cannons or something like that. And you'd see the waves, and you'd see the sky, and you'd have this really nice wide-angle lens big picture. Now when you use your spyglass to zoom in on that scene, you'll see the ship in a lot more detail. You'll see people working with rigging, you'll see people sweeping the deck, you'll see people loading up the cannons, you'll see pirates drinking grog and doing their piratey thing. And using the spyglass is a technique that I like to use in describing combat scenes. So getting back to the big battle, imagine that you're on a cliff overlooking this big scene and allow yourself to describe what it looks like from that level. Every once in a while, use your spyglass to zoom into one combat scene or another, describing what it is that the characters are doing at that given moment in time. Let's use the example of the katanas. Let's say in this big battle, there's a huge group of cavalry that is about to run into a group of katana-wielding warriors. Paint the scene from a macro level, giving the reader an idea of what it would feel like to be the general standing on the cliffs overlooking the scene. Then use the spyglass to zoom into one or more individual combats that are happening in the battle. So you can describe accurately, based on your research, where the hands are on the hilts of the katanas, 
or how the katanas actually work in terms of their physical ability to slice and dice. Or you can incorporate your equestrian research and describe what it actually feels like to do battle on horseback. How much you actually use the spyglass is going to depend largely on what kind of narrative voice you've chosen for the story. So if you're writing in the first person perspective as one of the cavalry or infantry, you're going to be using the spyglass quite a bit because you're on the ground as one of the soldiers. If you're writing from a third person omniscient perspective, you'll likely have a little bit more freedom with how to use the spyglass and you can zoom in and zoom out to establish a pacing for the combat scene that gives your readers a variety of perspectives and keeps the combat fresh and exciting every time. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Twitter for more crunchy content.